All right, some time ago, some viewer asked me about this particular product here. I did a video on return loss bridges and he said it was a shame we didn't open it up and show us the inside. Uh, it has some uh, RF transformer ballon type things in it and he wanted to see that. So we can take it apart today and I'll show you that. I showed some kind of ballon type designs when I put the SWR meter in a uh, antenna tuner and it's something you could buy off of eBay. And it had uh, two transformers. It had a, a one winding to 10 winding voltage transformer and a one winding to 10 winding current transformer uh, used in a bridge uh, circuit to measure SWR, uh, which is uh, very similar to uh, the return loss bridges. There's little distinction between uh, how, how you make those measurements. So there are uh, return loss bridges, and then there are couplers. You can measure return loss with a coupler, or you can measure return loss with a bridge. And I talked about couplers once before. I talked about uh, microstrip design couplers, where there's a, a parallel conductor next to the transmission line that couples some of the energy, and it brings it out onto the uh, third port. This one acts uh, the same way, but is designed a little bit differently. So we'll take a look at that one. And then this is a return loss bridge that I recently acquired, acquired from a viewer uh, donation. And so this is a real high uh, performance one from Hewlett Packard. I'm not sure what the frequency range of this thing is, um, but it, uh, it, I believe it is a return loss bridge as well. And so we'll open these three up and, and take a look inside. We'll start with the uh, return loss bridge one. And I've already opened all of these up. So the inside of this one is basically a uh, microstrip version and at the center here is a ballon. Uh, there is a, uh, a pig nose transformer and it has uh, two sets of windings and a range and a bridge and there's stuff. We'll, so we'll, we'll take a look at a higher magnification but that's what the inside of this one looks like. Almost looks like a proto board but it's not. It actually is strip line uh, strip line layout and or micro strip layout and uh, these are just stitching vias for grounds. All right so that is that is a bridge. Uh, this is a coupler. This is a uh, I don't remember what the frequency range of this one is. This one is 800 to 2 gig um, and it's made by many circuits and it is a coupler though okay and we'll take a look at this one inside because it also has uh, two transformers in it. Uh, so it uses a RF transformers to do its job instead of the uh, microstrip type thing. So we'll take a look at that one. And it's on a Teflon board too, which I don't know if you've seen one of those, but Teflon boards are really cool looking. All right. And then we have this nice beast here, all in gold, of course, from the, from the way back days. And inside it are, hey look, a couple of, of, uh, a couple of RF devices and some other things. So this one's quite complicated. Um, let me change lenses uh, to the first magnification and we'll take a take a gander at these things. Does anybody use that word anymore? Gander? All right, here's a little bit closer look. Uh, the uh, RF comes in here, it gets split, it goes one way to a 50 ohm load and the other way to an unknown and uh, if there's any imbalance, then the signal will go this way. And there's a choke here, so an RF choke that keeps uh, keeps the imbalance on this side. Then any imbalance will get will get reflected out over here. So that goes that way. And reflect is not the right word, but any imbalance will then create a signal that comes out over here. All right. So that's how this thing works. Uh, there's a little uh, input pad and output pad. I don't know what, don't know why there's an output pad. Maybe just to uh, isolate between this mismatch, um, keep, keep, keep these closer together in uh, um, impedance and then uh, uh, any imbalance here will show up out over here. This is that little uh, coupler, very, very cute. I uh, like the gray, gray PC board, the uh, Teflon PC board. Uh, they are slippery. Uh, don't want to touch this one, but they feel slippery. And so it has a little circuit here that's uh, 
Um, the input and the output is just a, a single wire through through one of the toroids. So this is this looks exactly like the little SWR bridge that I showed before, um, a much bigger one. But basically, there's a, a one a one to something. I don't know if it's one to ten, but there's like a one to ten transformer here and a one to ten transformer here. There's a there's a, a one turn here and one turn here, and then they're a, they're coupled together, like cross coupled together. And then on this side, there's a 50 ohm load and then an output. So uh, uh, coupler made out of these discretes. This is a very, very nice one. This is good from uh, 800 to 2000 megahertz. And then we have this beast. It's very, very cool. Uh, again, here's the big end connector. Signal comes in. Uh, it gets balanced here against a 50 ohm load, I believe. And then uh, Let's see here. This here and here, and that out here. So the way that I think this works is this is the input. There we go. I think I think I know how this works now. This is, this is the in, input connector here. So the RF energy comes in here, and then it gets split. Okay, and part of it goes this way, and part of it goes this way, and. The part that goes this way sees a 50 ohm load way, way down in there. We'll see that when I get to the microscope. And then the uh, uh, the other uh, path comes this way, and it should see a 50 ohm load out here. And if it doesn't, it causes an imbalance, and then the signal will go this way. And then there's a, a choke uh, to keep any RF from entering that way on the outside of things, and and it and uh, this is a coax. This is not wire. This is coax. Uh, very, very small diameter coax. Very, very, very small diameter coax. Anyway, it comes this way, and then it gets it gets sent out over this way, and there's a bunch of weird, weird voodoo filtering and stuff, and um, it gets sent out over here. And then there's also this weird DC path that I don't understand. There's a DC path that comes in here goes through this choke, down into here, and then out this side, through a choke, and then to ground. So I, I don't know what that weird DC path is, if that's just a way to measure the SWR. Um, and then this is a, I don't know. <laughs> I'm kind of lost on this thing. I don't know. But. Uh, then there's this interesting circuit over here that's completely separate. OK, this is a, uh, its own little thing. There's an input here. It comes here to a uh, attenuator, and then it comes out here into a choke, and then it comes out here to a splitter. Or these are a combiner. Two signals come in, they get combined, they go through a choke, and then they get attenuated and come out. I don't know; it could work either way, I suppose. Anyway, let's go. Let's go to the microscope and uh, take a closer look at these things. All right, so this is the uh, 50 ohm or the uh, end connector that comes in and it comes into the that glass board. So here's that glass board with um, with this tapered transmission line. So there's a ground underneath it, so it's microstrip. And it comes in and then it goes to this point here, which I don't quite understand. <laughs> And uh, it is a very delicate. So at the top is the little coax, and at the bottom, I think it's just a wire um, of the same diameter. So I don't know if you can see in the video here, but there is a tiny little coax that goes to that center pin, that center pin. And then there are some these two capacitors sitting on edge down at the bottom there. They're actually electrically isolated, not isolated, but electrically separated, but tied on the left hand end. And then that transmission line continues and then goes to, I believe, that little black little stripe at the very, very end. There's a 50 ohm load at the other end. So that's pretty wild. And then it makes this journey where there's one path this away, and uh, 
this is the uh, this is that RF choke to do that DC thing at the center point here and then on this side there's another RF one anyway those two chokes then meet up here and so again once you can see the center conductor of that little coax goes on to the right and it goes into this little feed here through a capacitor and then out to that connector um, and then there are uh, the ground is then connected through these capacitors uh, to that other strange signal that goes through the other. I don't know. It's like they've separated grounds, but then they've combined them with capacitors. Um, maybe the separation of the, with those capacitors is due to that DC bias that's in there. Maybe they needed the RF ground to go through, but they needed a DC ground as well. Maybe that's what those, all those capacitors are doing. I really don't know. Anyway, uh, on, on the ground side of the RF choke, uh, it goes to, I believe, a DC ground and then also an AC ground. So that capacitor, I believe, creates an AC ground to that to that screw and then I believe that little strip over there is also a DC ground so yeah go figure and then on the other side that one comes out uh, and it goes through a, a pin that's a uh, a DC block on the outside and then it also has a capacitor to ground so it has a DC reference to ground as well so I don't know I don't know enough to comment much on this other than it's really, really pretty and it looks super, super expensive. <laughs> All right. So let's look at the other side, which is a totally separate circuit. All right. So on this side over here, there's that little spool of coax. All right. Let's start over. Let's start over on this side here. All right. So there is some connector here on the outside, an SMA, and it comes in again to these little taper transmission lines on. So this is on glass again. And it goes over here and there's a resistor to ground and then a resistor crossed and a resistor to ground. So I believe that's a pad. So there's some type of attenuation pad coming in. And then it follows along this away. And now it's going uh, into that spool of wire. All right. That's coax. Uh, and so uh, it goes through that and it comes out over here. You can kind of see the coax is clamped. The outer of the portion of the coax is clamped and then the inner connector is soldered down to the uh, micro strip over here. And then it looks like it probably goes through a, I'm guessing maybe that's a power splitter. Um, I don't know. Or, can, or maybe, it, maybe this is a, a combiner. Maybe there's something comes in here, something that comes in here, they get combined. They then get, go through a choke and then it gets attenuated and, and out. So it's make sure it's 50 ohms on the output. I don't know. I'm just guessing on this stuff, but yeah, there you go. Okay. So if anybody can tell me how this thing works, let me know. <laughs> uh, like I said, I'll have to figure out where this thing was used, but, uh, but it's very, very cool. And I hope you enjoyed the uh, uh, look inside look inside that one. I believe it's wired up exactly the same as that uh, bridge in the uh, uh, SWR meter that I showed. And then uh, this little cool little uh, Teflon one over here. Very cute.